Have you ever wondered if something is alive or not? You might think that's pretty easy. I'm alive, you're alive, this tree is alive. Hey, if it breathes or is green, it's alive. Well, that might work for animals and plants, but life is a little more complicated. What about this thing? What is this stuff? It looks like green petals on a tree. Is this alive? Let's find out. Hello friends, I'm Mr. Queso and welcome to the classroom. So today we are going to learn how to determine if something is alive or not by looking at a checklist called the characteristics of life. Now it's important to note that the titles of these characteristics may vary and your teacher or textbook may even organize these characteristics differently. That's okay. Did you know that even to this day, scientists are still discovering new species on this planet? That means that we're still learning what it really means to be alive. But for right now, we can trust these characteristics. Let's dive in. I made a snake. Now, let's just pretend for a moment that the snake masterpiece was real. Each one of these Lego bricks would be a cell. Cells are the building blocks of life, just like how these Lego bricks are the building blocks of my snake masterpiece. And all organisms have them. All organisms are made of cells. Now, if we zoom in really, really close on the cell, you'd be able to see that each cell is carrying an instruction manual. It's called DNA. Now, DNA has the instructions for how to make life, and every cell has it. Oh, these trolls always popping on my desk to surprise me. Now, speaking of reacting with shock and surprise, that reminds me of our next characteristic of life. All organisms respond to stimuli. Just like how my natural involuntary response to the troll was to jump with fear. Turns out, my fear of troll dolls is part of what makes me alive. Now, you see, all living things want to maintain a stable internal environment. That's called homeostasis. Here, let me show you a really cool example. Check out this rad tree. It's a perfect example of response to stimulus and maintaining homeostasis. Now, at one point in this tree's life, it fell over. And it could have called it quits right there. And believe me, many trees do. But not this tree. She's brave and she grew once again towards the sun. Why? Because for a plant, maintaining a stable internal environment means growing towards the sun. That's called phototropism. And you can see examples of this all around. Take a look in and around your school or home and you'll see plants growing towards the light of the sun. All right, let's go back to the classroom. Now, the next characteristic of life is that all living things reproduce. Why is this important? Well, if things stop reproducing, they go extinct, and we don't want that. Now, there are two types of reproduction, sexual and asexual. Asexual reproduction is cool because it's pretty much just cloning. Yeah, you heard me right. Nature knows how to clone people. Well, they don't know how to clone people. They know how to clone, comma, people. Sexual reproduction, on the other hand, requires both a male and a female and the offspring has traits of both the mother and the father. Like how this child has her father's big ears and her mother's blue hair. This passing on of traits happens through that instruction manual we learned about, DNA. And it's essential for all life. Now let's use this child as an example once again. She will start off as a small baby, but then she will grow and grow into an adult. And that's the next characteristic of life. All living things grow and develop. Let me ask you a question. Does this scene ring any bells for you? No. You better eat your vegetables. No, I don't wanna eat them. But you need them to grow. Nah, I can just eat a popsicle. As great as popsicles for dinner may seem, mom is right. We need food in order to live and grow and popsicles just won't cut it. 
You see, that's the next characteristic of life. All living things need energy to live. We use energy to walk, play soccer, or even breathe. We use energy for everything we do. So those veggies are pretty important. Thanks, Mom. I get it, veggies are important, but what about this stuff? Is this alive? Let's use the checklist. Okay, so this looks like a green petal on a tree. Let's see, does it have cells? You know, that's gonna be hard for us to observe without using a microscope. So let's send a sample back to the lab. Wow, it has cells, rad. <laughs> and if it has cells, then it must have DNA, right. Now, does it respond to stimuli? Well, scaring it didn't work. But you, you, you know what? It actually does look like this is growing a lot in the light. You know, that's an example of phototropism. That's response to stimuli. <laughs> and look at all of these petals of different sizes. That could be an example that they're growing and developing and reproducing. And since they all look so similar, I bet they're passing on traits as well. The so last one, does it use and need energy? How does this stuff get food? Well, it turns out that it actually absorbs the nutrients from the organic matter inside of this log. How cool is that? So you know what that means? It's alive! Well, there you have it. Determining if something is alive or not is pretty easy if you follow this checklist. Well, most of the time anyway. Don't even get me started on viruses. All right, well, there you have it. See you later, and remember, be curious and ask questions. Hey, parents and educators, if you like what you saw, you can buy this material and much more in the link in the description below.